Good to have you with us today. The German government and the Federal Criminal Police Office have issued a warning that terrorists could carry out chemical weapons attacks. And the warnings divided into several disturbing scenarios. The report describes what terrorists might use to carry out chemical attacks, including poisoning drinking water and food supplies. Now, possible attacks on chemical plants are also considered high risk. The report presents detailed descriptions of the threats and the extent to which security authorities, hospitals and rescue services are prepared. What we've seen recently um, is three particular recipes using poison um, to try and uh, attack the population to um, effectively kill as many of the unbelievers, as they call them, the Kafir, in the Kafir lands in, in Western Europe, and crucially, to spread as much fear and terror as possible. Well, as unlikely as these scenarios may seem, some recent revelations about security in Europe are causing concern. Last year in Brussels, police found a bomb-making factory full of chemicals during raids in the wake of major terror attacks in the city. What's more, a few days later, it turned out that two nuclear power plant workers in the country fled to Syria to join ISIL. In Germany, alarm bells rang when military equipment was stolen from a U.S. armory in Stuttgart. And only recently, German authorities lost track of three Islamists that had been deemed a legitimate threat. What we've seen with both al-Qaeda and with ISIS is a, uh, a strategy, if you like, they call death by a thousand cuts. And the idea being that rather than having seasoned terrorists who are well-trained, well-experienced, but actually are potentially on the radar of the intelligence services around the world, if you can actually teach lone wolves, the, the homegrown terrorists, some of the basic tactics that actually they can develop in their own kitchens without arousing any suspicion at all. If you can get people to do that, then that's the death by a thousand cut strategy. Resistance to Donald Trump has been on the rise following his inauguration, with part of the protest movement morphing into an uprising with calls for revolt. The revolution starts here. Hey, hey, ho, ho. And it's scenes like these which have made one political magazine draw comparisons between anti-Trump protests and another prominent revolutionary movement. Guy and H. Jacan picks up the story. We want a revolution! We want a revolution! Donald Trump's election was unlike anything we'd seen before. But one outlet, Politico, looked at the events surrounding the election and wrote a satirical piece pointing to similarities with the Arab Spring. On the surface, they may have a point, even if made in jest. In both worlds, we saw mass protests against someone seen by the opposition as a dictator, or in Trump's case, a would-be dictator. I have described him as, as a, an imposter and con man and, and a would-be dictator. Demonstrations turning violent with agitated youth smashing windows and setting things on fire. Conspiracy theories and allegations of foreign interference. There was no shortage of that in the U.S. election. Russian infiltration of our last election. Russia clearly tried to meddle in, uh, in, in our political system. Only Russia's senior most officials could have authorized these activities. As an exercise in free speech and as an exercise in sort of, uh, you know, nonviolent dissent. I thought... It's great to see activism uh, reborn, if you will, in a, in a way that we haven't seen. It was the revolution they said could never happen. They're back out on the streets of Cairo calling for those political reforms and freedoms. And all of this against the backdrop of a divided country, along religious sectarian lines in the Arab world and political ones in America. One big difference, however. People in the Arab world protested against old regimes and for a right to elect a new government. In America, the protests were against the democratically elected president who just took office. If you look at the way the media have portrayed Donald Trump as some despotic leader who needs to be toppled, 
we're actually having people now talking about impeaching Donald Trump. He was just elected. He hasn't done anything yet. But they want to topple the regime. I keep thinking of the, the Saddam Hussein statue toppling. And you have pockets of, of radicals trying to form, I would imagine, a coup, an insurgent. I mean, the comparisons you can't miss. We're yet to see whether or to what extent the mass protests under the banner, not my president, will affect Trump's ability to govern. In Washington, I'm Ganesh Chekyan, RT.